let this information out. The most enduring experiments have been in the field of remote viewing. We got into it when we discovered that they were in it. I realize that what people can do is quiet their mind and describe the experiences that appear in your awareness. We've been investigating a phenomenon called remote viewing. We found that many individuals are able to accurately describe what's going on in distant locations, blocked from any kind of ordinary perception. Don't name it, just tell me what appears mm -hmm. in your visual field, and then draw that. Are you saying that the work you've been doing is classified? I really can't talk about uh, matters of classification, as you can imagine. My name is Russell Targ, and I'm a physicist. We were once targeted to describe Premier Brezhnev's office in the Kremlin with Hella Hammett. Who we was were the control person initially. That's right. <laughs> Hella, could you drift up in the air and look down on this site? And Hella said, I'm walking down a hall with an arch ceiling, and at the end of the hall, there's a door with an arch top, and the door is covered with red leather, and it's held in place by brass upholstery tack. So I said to her, well, I'll open that door. Why don't we walk in and see what the room looks like? And she said, it's dark in the room, which would be appropriate because they're eight hours ahead of us. So I said, okay, I'll turn on the lights and we can see everything in the room. Big and you wind. said that in this same matter of fact voice, like, of course you can do this. <laughs> One of the well, secrets on, of on your success. On the right success. side, there's a window and I can see out and it looks like red square because I can see the Onion Dome churches and behind the desk, there's a, a door in the paneled wall. And I said, well, why don't we open that and see where it leads? And we opened the door and walked down the stairs mm -hmm. with some kind of large computer room. It felt like mm -hmm. a penetrating into a dangerous area. You don't have clearance to go into the Russian computer rooms. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, I think we have a pretty good description. Right. Let, let's end this here. Two years later, I gave a lecture to the Soviet Academy of Sciences in the Kremlin. And their letter to me said, please come to the Soviet Union so we can exchange propaganda. I didn't have a big concern about that. I trusted Russell. He went through the process of asking permission. I assumed that. I'm actually quite confident of that because had he not done so, he would be in jail. No, I did not ask any permission to go to Russia. I just went. Of course, they can't reveal secret information, and I declared my independence and left. When they first invited me to come, they said, is there anything you'd like to see as long as you're here? And I said, oh yes, I would like to have a peek at Brezhnev's office. I would just like to see where he sits. And indeed, it's just as she described, you this odd red leather door held mm -hmm. in place by upholstery tack, the huge desk on the right, window on the left, and a door and the wall behind the desk, mm -hmm. and we did not go downstairs into the computer room. When they first invited me to come, they had the idea that I would just come and give a lecture and talk to the Academy of Sciences. But I said, oh no, it's a chance to do a 6,000 mile remote viewing. I don't want to miss that. Right, yes. Uh, don't you have somebody I could work with as a psychic? So the project that Carol and I did, Carol's a video, videographer, and we set up to do a remote viewing experiment with a famous uh, Russian healer. And she was famous for having kept Brezhnev alive at a time was he, when he was very sick. We also had the people who invited us, which is the Soviet Academy of Sciences, and they were there with their photographers also, in case something psychic should actually happen. I'm a member of scientific staff of theoretical problems department of the USSR Academy of Sciences. I took part in this remote viewing experiment and I'm going to 
evaluate the obtained data. It was a merry-go-round on a pier. You can see it on a postcard. Juna Devitashvili gave her description and drew pictures. I've never done anything like this before ever in my life. <clears throat> I know it seems like some crazy Americans have come in, ask you to quiet your mind, look into the future. But if you just do what we ask you to do, everything will be all right. I saw that they were walking in a circle around this plaza. It looks like somebody's, somebody's lifting up their hand and pointing something out. And something right by this plaza is circular. She began describing Pier 39. The most amazing aspect was that not only was it remote viewing, but it was precognitive remote viewing. So the decisions had not yet been made that we were aware of while we were there. But Juno was reading what would happen in the future. Juno had never done remote viewing before and didn't even speak English. Elizabeth Targ, Russell's daughter and a medical student at Stanford, was the interviewer having taken six years of Russian. And not far away was the eye of this animal. I saw him in profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with this kind of mark. I don't know what these mean. And you were looking from above? No, now from, now from this side. I saw in profile. She was talking about this plaza and she uh, mentioned people walking the plaza, which um, would be appropriate. She said that, that this is a place where there are children. She also described pointy, um, pointy ears and glass eyes, which she saw in a profile, and she mentioned that specifically. So what does that mean? I just started seeing all these different images. Her task was to sit in her living room, talk to Elizabeth, and describe where this unknown scientist would be two hours in the future and 6,000 miles to the west. And she did that excellently. I don't think anyone really expected Russian and American uh, scientists to work together. So she viewed the picture by her own eyes. Besides that, she gave the different views of the target, the upper view, the front view, and some other uh, angles of description. One of my strongest memories of that trip is your relationship with Elizabeth and what a tight bond you had. It was a very beautiful thing to see. But, um, We're just so close. With a lot of love and respect for one another. She was a brilliant young woman, spoke Russian fluently, so she was a perfect person to have on this trip. That's really funny. So she was there. This is a real clairvoyance experiment, not a precognition one. After doing several experiments in remote healing, Elizabeth Targ passed away of the very rare cancer that she was studying in 2002. Many people feel that they've gotten messages from my deceased daughter, Elizabeth something that nobody knew but Elizabeth and me. The evidence is very strong that your awareness is timeless. Therefore, there's no such thing as death because the awareness is independent of time. We're revealing something far beyond the government program.